just out for a bit of morning fishing. As you can see behind me, the sunrise is just about to happen and it's uh, 5 a.m. So we'll get the rods set up and see what happens. Down at the harbour today, I'm going to be doing some spinning and beach casting. I have a black rock 13 foot, a pen, soft blaster 7000. I have a 6 ounce weight and I have a 2 hook down rig. Um, each hook has mackerel on it, that's all I can get at the moment. So we're going to get this in and get fishing. So guys, what we're going to be targeting is any fish that comes into the harbour, which could be pollock, cod, plate, ray, possibly, mackerel. So we sent out the two hooks, the mackerel on it, and now I'm going to set up a spinning rod. Now guys, I'm going to be using the Abu Diplomat. It's a travel rod. Comes in four pieces. Uh, the reason I use the travel rod is I carry a travel rod in my work van and I carry a travel rod in my car and reels. So if ever I'm walking in an area close to the sea and I want to try it out, I use this. So, guys, this is the Abu, Abu Diplomat setup 10.6 foot, the Aria 2 Abu reel, and like I said, I'm using a Kildi 32 gram lure. So guys, let's get in the water. Back as far as you can to get the best distance you can and then send it out. You want to let it drop in the water for a little bit. Close off your bail arm and just let it sink for a little bit. And this kind of water around here is about 30 foot, so probably wait about 10 seconds like now, and then we can start reeling and we pull to the side. And pull to the side. So when you're reeling in, when you're if you're fishing near rocks, if you get a bite, it's important to try to keep the fish away from the rocks. So sometimes what they can do is they can dive down and get your line tangled, and you, once it goes around the rock, you're gonna lose your gear. So just remember that and let's keep fishing. So as a general rule, what, what you should do is bring a few different lures, try one for a little while. If it doesn't work, try another one. And then you'll get the best feel for which works best in the area that you're in. It's going to be high tide in about an hour. Yeah, so as a general rule, it's two hours before high tide and two hours after is the best time to fish. Now, just on the matter of bait, today I'm using mackerel because that's all I can get at the moment. But as a general rule, I'd always have two baits with me. I'd have a mackerel or squid, mackerel or ragworm. Now guys, I'm going to reel in the beach caster. Uh, I don't think there's anything on it, I haven't seen movement, but the tide is running this way and I'm spinning. So I have two rods out at the one time, so you need to make sure you keep the lines apart, otherwise they get twisted. And when you get lines that twisted, it's a real pain to uh, untangle them. So we'll just move this in and I'll move it out from a different direction. Now, as you can see, my hooks no longer have mackerel on them. Now, this can mean that there could be crabs down there where I'm casting in and they're stripping the bait. If it's a case where your bait keeps being stripped, cast in a different area and reel in and check it. Usually I wait about 20 to 25 minutes before I reel in. I'm not using big pieces of mackerel, only little strips. So little pieces on and I'm going to use some bait elastic uh, because the, the, the mackerel's been stripped off and I reeled it in. So the bait elastic, you wind around it really tight and it just keeps the bait on the hook longer. A good thing to always bring them with you is a rag for wiping your hands. I just use a towel, I cut them into little sections. Uh, when you're baiting up and you have fish on your hands, 
and then your casts and your hands are slippy so it's something simple but it's something that's really really good to bring uh, to keep your hands clean right so I've rebated up my rig as you can see I've got my macro on so we'll get this out Line. So the bait rods back in the water with the macro and I'm gonna spin the other side. Now the good thing about spinning and using a bait rod, having two rods is well that's down with the macro fishing by itself. I can still keep myself busy by using the spinner rods and sometimes you you might get something on the spin, sometimes you might get something on the bait rod. At least this way I have two chances of catching something. Early morning fishing I find is good, you can be the first person here. Late evening, night time or early morning is generally a good time to fish. I mean you can fish through the day but I like the early morning, I like it that it's quiet and there's not many people around. Sometimes when you come in the evening you can have a load of guys around and it's hard to get a space. If the tide is pushing your line sideways you don't want to be getting wrapped up in someone else's line. So morning's good because you're on your own and if you look I'm the only one here there's actually no one else here which is great because I can uh, put my rods wherever I want took my niece out there fishing and she got her first pollock on spin it's always great spread the fish in love When you come out early in the morning and it's peaceful, you're the only one around, it's, it's really nice just to be out here. So although you want to catch something, just to do the fishing, just to get out here and do a bit of fishing, is good enough, even if you catch no fish. But being a fisherman, I really do want to catch them. I just switched the camera around guys, because uh, the fitness rod was going, but classic when you tell everyone there is a boy and you turn around and look at it it stops moving now some fish will bite and they'll keep knocking the rods some fish can bite and just sit on it so we'll just watch this for a sec and see is there any movement it could be crabs another thing you can do if you want to check if there's something on your line is you reel and you hold it and you just fail to see is there anything pulling you can hold the line so we'll just reel this one in see is there anything on it actually it does feel heavy see guys it's a dogfish hooked right through the jaw so as I said before with the dogfish you have to hold the tail because they can bring it round and rub it on your hands and their skin is like sandpaper and you see he's holding his mouth open so this should be an easy one to unhook I had to move down low to get that out the hook was in it was in at an awkward angle but as you can see the dogfish is now off the hook and we just put them back in so guys rods re rebated up make sure that your feet are stuck back in see where they can move that's when you pull them loose they loosen so you can get your your weight out of the sand or whatever it's stuck in 
So you stick them back on, make sure they're all good. And we'll send this one out again. I lost that lower there and I'm putting on the copper 28 gram, a new one I picked up. So we'll give this a try, see what it's like. This is a Custer, Abu Custer 28 gram. So we'll give it a try. That dogfish that we were looking at there, it's probably about two and a half pound. They can grow a lot bigger, but it's not a bad size dogfish. We're off the harbour wall. They'd be big enough to bring home to eat, but I don't eat them. I've heard they're nice, guys. If you see the tip of the rod there, again the same scenario that I got the dog fish last time. I seen a little knocking on it, and then the rod didn't move. So we're gonna reel in, and we'll have a look to see if we got on. Reeling in, you reel till you feel it tight, and then you pull up hard, and then you just constantly keep it reeling with your rod pointed up. There you go guys, this is a little whitening. Now guys, this is a little whitening and how you know it's not a cod, it doesn't have the little cod, little moustache coming off here. So this is a little whitening. And we'll throw him back and I don't really, you'll be able to see it. Not a terribly big whitening, but it's another species. So we'll put her out again and see can we get something else. Now, you can eat whitening. Whitening is a nice fish to eat, yeah, but that fish was too small. That fish was probably half a pound or less. You want to be probably looking at a fish about four pounds, and then you can get some decent fillets. Now guys, when you cast out, when the weight hits the water, you want it to tighten up your line and if you see the top here you see the way the top moves when I pull the line that's what you want because that will show your bite detection if you left the line too slack when you get a bite you wouldn't be able to see it so how you do it when you tighten it up you can just grab the line in your fingers and pull it and if you see the tip of your rod moving nicely you know that you're set up and ready to go so that's in the water now now when you're spinning it's pretty much repetitive in the sense that you're casting, you're letting it sink, you're reeling in slowly, and then you're doing the same thing over and over. And obviously there's fish out there traveling around and you just have to get your lure in their line of sight. That's it, wrapped up. The two rods are put away. And I'll just show you where I am. This is uh, Greystones Harbor. It's a beautiful day. This actually harbour is actually one of the first places I ever done sea fishing. I actually done it with my brother Jason, and uh, he took me here when I was about eleven. And we actually caught place that night. Uh, we caught two of them. Obviously, his place was double the size of mine. My brother always has this ability. Whenever you go fishing with him, he seems to catch the biggest fish. So he obviously has some technique that he's not telling me about. But uh, yep, yeah, this is the area and what a lovely day it is so that's it guys thanks for joining me this morning and please like and subscribe and i'll see you again